help you in any way possible. Of course, as we try to open up the program text message, we try to examine a quote from the book, Today is Mine, by Leroy Brownlow. So we're going to do that at this time. Uh, the purpose for starting off with a quote is so that you and I can examine our lives up and down and we can see our faults and our flaws and see how we can try to perfect them. Today's quote is called, Love Understands. Uh, the little world each, li each lives in needs an atmosphere of understanding. This calls for artists, not bunglers. To understand people is truly one of the most accomplished arts and one of the most necessary ingredients of successful living. It is an art more dependent on heart feeling than eyesight and ear hearing. We cannot fathom people unless we have the love that feels for them and with them. It is then that we place the charitable construction of their motives, magnify their virtue, and minimize their faults. When this is done, there is no problem in understanding people. Uh, truly, that's true. May we all try to have more love in our lives, and hopefully today's program will benefit you. We'll be right back on Text Message. I'm so excited for this game seven. You know, you think about these two teams, they've challenged each other throughout the entire season. It went back and forth, back and forth. Now it's finally down to the finals and they're gonna play for all the marbles for one game. I still can't believe they've made it this far. You know, yeah, it's, it's so surprising to see that, but one, only one team can win. You know, they challenge each other and I guess we'll see. I'm not really worried about the game. I just want the snacks. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, why, that's why I came to snacks and the, and the study. Yeah. yeah. Well, just a quick question real quick. You think about challenges. They've challenged each other all season. You know, we as, we as Christians, we're going to be challenged and our faith is going to be challenged. And so, you know, how would you define a challenge faith or what would be a challenge faith? You know, that's a, that's a great question. It's a question that, uh, that so many people are affected by yeah. at one time or another in their life. And you know, when you think about faith, faith has to deal with our uh, relationship with our Father. It has to deal with our relationship with the Creator of the universe. Right. You know, we read in Hebrews 11 and verse 6 that without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that mm -hmm. cometh to God must believe that He is, that He is a rewarder of them that diligently mm -hmm. seek Him. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as we seek God, there's going to be times that things are going to come into our life that challenge us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it hits uh, the word challenged faith. Right. And so there, there's going to be some obstacles that you and I alike are going to go through in life that may cause us to get off our course. Uh -huh. And uh, the thing that we need to do is, is understand that when challenges come about, you know, God is always there. He's still there. He's in the same spot that he's always been. Right. And so I want you guys to, to understand that when we define it, we're talking about some type of obstacle that, that comes right. up that, that may alter maybe our belief or our trust in our Father. Yeah, that's a great point. Is, it, is there any uh, time or place in our life where our faith may be challenged? You know, we mentioned that... Uh, that there may be a number of times that uh, that this may come about. Uh, uh, there are circumstances that all of us may be faced with at times. Right. Some people have a lot of circumstances that they're faced with. Some people may not have quite as many. Every single one of us are dealt with a different variety of challenges in life. And, and you know, as you think about those challenges specifically, uh, death. Death yeah. would be something that challenges a lot of people. Uh, for instance, with adults, if you have uh, the death of, of a spouse, mm -hmm. uh, if you have the death of a child, uh, I'm told that uh, the death of a child is a lot mm -hmm. worse than, than the death of a, of a spouse. Right. Uh -huh. uh, you know, my, my sister passed away uh, several years ago, and uh, I guess it's been, been uh, a little 
four or five years now, uh, somewhere somewhere in that neighborhood, and uh, it has really challenged our family, uh-huh. and especially my mother. It right. challenged her a whole lot, and uh, it's something that's challenged her faith to the very core. But she's not the only one that it's challenged right. uh, that have that have dealt with death. You think about sicknesses. Now, there's a lot of a lot of Christians that, that have been affected by a number of sicknesses. Uh, some of them have been affected sicknesses like cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been affected by sicknesses like MS. Uh, there's been uh, handicaps that people have had to deal with. Uh, you think about uh, changes in dynamics of the family, such as divorce. Divorce is something that, that really challenges people. Yeah. It challenges adults. Uh, it challenges children. Uh, because a lot of times, children, they start blaming themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they have problems with trust. They have problems with, with resentment. You know, there's hardships that may come about. Uh, uh, mom or dad may lose their job. And, and that may challenge a young person's faith because of the changes that they're going to be they're going to be taking place in the family. It may challenge the faith of an adult when they lose their job. Right. Temptation is something that challenges an individual in their faith. Some people uh, have a hard time with this specific temptation right. here or that specific temptation there. That one over there may not be a temptation to them, yeah. but those temptations they challenge people. And guys, they come in all shapes and sizes. Oh. Yeah. Well, you think about, you know, we talked earlier, uh, you know, about these two teams meeting again and how they challenge each other all season. What's kind of some illustrations or examples you can give us of people being challenged like that? You know, one of the, the areas that, that really comes to mind is a man by the name of Bob Sperlin. <laughs> Uh, Bob Sperlin is a is a brother in Christ that I think it was in 95, 96 that uh, he and his wife lost their daughter in an automobile accident. Hmm. And just a short time after, if, if I've got the events correct, uh, Bob was diagnosed with muscular sclerosis. Wow. And... Uh, uh, muscular sclerosis is a disease. Now, I'm not a not a doctor, not a physician, but uh, it's a disease that affects your body. Mm-hmm. It's a disease that affects your muscles, mm-hmm. and a lot of times can handicap an individual. Mm-hmm. Bob was a faithful gospel preacher. Still is a faithful gospel preacher. He's not able to preach publicly in the same format that he once was uh, because of MS. But Bob uses other means today to get mm-hmm. the message out. Uh, but you think about uh, what ninety six to uh, two thousand fourteen, almost twenty years later, Bob is bedridden. Wow. Uh, and this has taken place over time, but it's slowly, you know, affected his body to where the only thing that he can do is, is have this microphone that's attached to his mouth. And, and I think he's got a number of, of impediments with his speech now, but he's able to speak into his computer and his computer is able to type out his messages. But I want you to think about not only how it's challenged him physically, you know it's got to have challenged his faith as well. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And yet this guy has continued to persevere. This guy has continued to remain faithful despite this mind-blowing uh, physical infirmity, this physical hardship right. that's taken place in his life. You think about the loss of their child coupled with that. Wow. Uh, you think about not only Bob and what he's gone through, but think about what his family has mm-hmm. gone through. Uh, his wife diligently, lovingly takes care of her husband every day, takes care of all of his medical needs, takes care of all of his physical needs that he has. You know, it's challenged her at times. It's challenged his other family members. They have a son. His son's a faithful gospel preacher, does a lot of great work in uh, in the state of Alabama. And uh, uh, But this family to me is the epitome of a family whose faith has been challenged, but yet they've remained faithful through it all. Right. And guys, that's that's the key. Yeah. You know, there's gonna be circumstances that come up in life at times, those hardships, those temptations, uh, those heartbreaks, uh, deaths and sicknesses that may come up. 
But guys, the, the worst thing we can do is turn our back on God. That's the worst thing. Absolutely. Because God has always stayed there right. with us. And I think it's very important that we have an understanding of, of what he has to say concerning the subject. Yeah, I actually want to go back to a, to a subject you were talking about. When your faith is challenged, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to draw you closer to God or it's going to drive you away from God. I remember uh, the uh, rich young ruler. Mm-hmm. His faith was challenged. He had to sell everything that he, that he had. Mm-hmm. And he ended up uh, going further away from God. But you think about a man named Job. His faith was challenged too, but it drew, drew him closer to God. Mm-hmm. So I was going to ask, is there any more verses that we can look at together to maybe see uh, about a challenged faith and see sure, how we can strengthen sure. challenged faith? Hey, you know, you, uh, Gerald, you mentioned uh, Job. Uh, Job is is probably the epitome the of a guy that yeah. that uh, uh, has had his faith challenged. You know, if you were to look up the word challenge faith in the dictionary and try to see a picture beside it, uh, Job's picture is gonna gonna be right there at the top of the list. But we see a guy who lost everything, mm-hmm. uh, lost all of his livestock, mm-hmm. lost several of his family members. Yeah. Uh, this guy, you know, you talk about everything that's been taken from him, his health, with all of the challenges that he faced there, and yet Job still remained a good man. He still remained a faithful man. It didn't. He didn't waver in his faith towards right. God. He still remained faithful to Him. And so, to me, if if we're going to see a person's example and walk in that person's footstep of a challenged faith, that's the guy. You know, it's it's one thing to define something, yeah. but it's one thing to see it in action. And Job is a guy where we really see a faith that's been challenged, uh, where he doesn't give up. Uh, a couple of passages to keep in mind. One of those would be James chapter one, verses two and three. Uh, and when I think about this passage, I'd like to share with you what the English Standard Version has to say in regards here, like the wording of it. It says, "Count it all joy, my brothers." When you meet trials of various kinds, you know, we talked about trials a moment ago coming in all shapes and sizes. When you meet those trials of various kinds, that's what James is talking about. He says, for you know that the testing of your faith proves steadfastness. It's important for us to understand that every time our faith is challenged, that that's another opportunity that we have to develop perseverance. That's another opportunity that that we have to build this steadfastness. And you know what? It helps us become stronger in our faith because there's a good chance that our faith is going to be challenged again. And if we've made it through that challenge, there's a good chance we're going to be able to make it through that challenge. You know, we learn from uh, experience is one of the the best teachers, isn't it? We learn from experiences in life. We learn from good things that we've done. We learn from mistakes that we've made. And one of the old sayings is we don't want to make the same mistake twice, right? Mm-hmm. So we learn from those things. And so one of the one of the things about the challenges of our faith, we made it through one challenge, learn from that. Hey, how did I make it through that? How did I keep my faith strong? Well, I can use that here when it's challenged again. Uh, another passage that comes to mind is it's Philippians four verse six. Uh, here, uh, the Apostle Paul. He says, be careful for nothing. Some of some other translations will use the phrase, be anxious in nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. When our faith is challenged, one of the very first places, if not the first place to go to, mm-hmm. should be prayer. But a lot of times when our faith is challenged, where does prayer get put? A lot of last times it gets list. put as last yeah. on the list, yeah. and uh, so it's very important that that we keep keep that keep God on the first of our list when problems come. I, I really love what the psalmist tells us in Psalm forty six and verse one. He talks about how God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. When those challenges take place, God is always in the same place. Mm-hmm. But you know, a lot of times we're the ones that move away from God. 
right. the challenges come, we're the ones that, that move ourselves away. I remember years ago when I was in preaching school with your guy's dad, when I was in preaching school with, with Kelvin, he and I were classmates together. And one of the teachers that, that we had there that, that all the students love is Keith Mosher. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Brother Mosher was telling us a, a story one day. And uh, he said he was he was telling us about God always remaining in the same spot. And uh, he said, you know, I remember years ago that uh, that my wife, his wife Dorothy, had asked him the question. She said, "How come we don't sit next to each other in the car <laughs> when we're driving down the road like we used to?" And you know what he told her. What was that? He said, uh, you're the one that moved away. <laughs> she used to be the one that sat in the middle of the uh-huh. car. And she's the one that moved to the door. You're the one that moved away. You know, a lot of times when our faith gets challenged in life, mm-hmm. guess what? We're the ones that move away. Right. We're the ones that move away from God. And God is always in that same fixed position. And it's important for us to cling to Him. One other passage that comes to mind is Psalm 62 and verse 8. The text tells us to trust in Him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. And so guys, when your faith gets challenged, always remember the first place to go is to go to God. Yes, sir. Well, I really appreciate this conversation we had. Uh, it's helped me. You know, I need to read a little more, challenge my faith a little more. And I know, you know, I can be like Job and all these other Bible examples because we can do this together because God is our refuge. Right. And I, you know, I appreciate you answering right. the question here. That's right. I appreciate it a lot. Yes, sir. You're, you're quite welcome. Hey, uh, game seven's about to start. Oh, uh, let's see who's going to win this one. Hey, remember the time Brother Moses gave us a pop quiz? Oh, yeah. Today we're also going to look at another Pew Packers class as we just finished uh, 10 minutes to kickoff. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope that it helped you in some way. Maybe it gave you some of the answers as we look at some difficult questions on that program. But now we're going to focus on singing. We're going to focus on two young men who love to sing, love to sing songs that glorify God, but they also love to break them down. And so right now, as we examine this particular song that we're going to look at, Gerald and Jordan Pugh are going to take us to school, so to speak, and help us learn about a new song. And what is that song today, Gerald and Jordan? What do you got to teach us today? We'll be back after they teach us this next song. All right. I think, you know, the next song I want to talk about is Where He Leads, I Will Follow. Okay. You know, the scripture reference, I think, for this song comes from John chapter 10, starting in verse 27, uh, where it says, My sheep listen to my voice and they follow me. You know, you kind of think of a, a physical shepherd. A physical sheep knows his shepherd's voice. And he's right. always going to follow wherever the shepherd goes. So I think that's very practical where it comes from. And a practical song title as well, where he leads, I'm going to follow. And right. we're literally called his sheep in the word. Right. And so I want to look at, you know, verse number one here. Okay. It says, why keep Jesus? It says, I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him all the way. You know, I think of, I can't help but think of Peter. You remember right. in, uh, in Matthew, I'm sorry, in Luke, when he talked about, you know, coming to Christ. And he said, you know, I'm going to go with you both to prison and to death. And then right after that, he said, you're going to deny me three times for the cock even crows. Right. And so I think of his, his zeal was there, but his faith wasn't there yet. And so I think that's something that we miss as Christians sometimes. We have that zeal, but we don't have the true mm-hmm. faith, uh, just right. as Jesus demanded of his apostles. Right. I, actually, I actually want to go back to John chapter 10. Okay. John chapter 10, verses 27. You mentioned that this is the verse where the song comes from. Right. But if you look at the context of chapter 10, it's talking about the believer's assurance. It's talking about... The assurance that we have being in Christ. And I want to read uh, verses 27 uh, again in 28 and 29. Okay. It says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And shall any man pluck them out of my hand? My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Verse 30 also says, I and my Father are one. So we, we see here, 
the assurance that we have being in Christ. Once we're in Christ and we stay faithful, nothing should be able to take us from our Father. Exactly. So I think that's something important that we can actually take from this song also. You know, let's let's look at verse 2. I think it gets really important as it goes down to each verse. Uh, verse 2 says, I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him all the way. You know, you think of this song, I think it's trying to take you back. Because it says, if you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to have to follow him everywhere he went. And so first off, he says, okay, I want to follow you. I want to follow you like Peter. Right. And the second verse says, okay, if you want to follow me, are you going to follow me through the garden? Just as I did. And we know in the garden, that's where he was betrayed. That's where he prayed. That's where uh, when he was praying, he was literally dripping sweat of like blood. sweats of blood. Right. And that's where all his apostles... They they ran away from him mm-hmm. after the mob came. So again, this song is it looks like it's rhetorically asking, okay, you can follow, but are you willing to do this? Right. Are you willing to do that too? Yeah, the song is trying to get you to think. Will you actually do what you're gonna say you're gonna do? Right. Like like you was talking about Peter, he denied Christ. Like even before that, Peter said he told Christ, "To whom shall we go?" So he was telling him he was so firm in that point in time. He said, we have nowhere else to go. But then a little bit later, you find out that he betrayed tri- He betrayed Christ. Right. So it's a lot of um, growth that we have to take place. It's a process. Our, our spiritual walk is a process. Right. And I think it's very, very important to, for us to always go back and remember. Because, you know, we as Christians, you know, as, uh, you know, we're always taught we have to count the cost. Right. You know, when we become a Christian, it's not going to be an easy road. You know, the Bible says, you know, uh, they hated me, so they're going to hate you. You know, so if they hated the master, they're going to hate the servants, too. Right. And so I think that's the importance of verse number two. Now, let's go on to verse number three. It says, I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him through judgment. I'll go with him all the way. Now, this verse is kind of more positive here. The second Mm -hmm. verse got you to think. But the third verse, it says you're going to go with him through judgment. And so we all know at the end of time when Jesus comes, whenever he decides to come, or when the Father decides it's right for Christ to come, we're going to go through judgment. Right. And so we're kind of thinking here, okay, you have to realize where you are as a Christian. You know, have I done enough? Mm -hmm. You know, have I evangelized just as Christ did? Have I did benevolent works? Have I done edification? Have I been busy? Have I been an active member in right. the Church of Christ? Right. Because if you haven't, you'll go with Him through judgment, but you're going to hear the wrong result. Right. And so we want to hear, "Well done, that good and faithful servant." We don't want to be like the slothful servant, right? Which was found. That's in. Ma- Let's turn to Matthew chapter twenty-five. Exactly. Matthew chapter twenty-five is the. A parable of the servants and the talents. Mm-hmm. And the servant gave each of the, of his, uh, or the master gave each of the servants different talents. And we want to look at uh, the judgment that we were alluding to earlier. Let's go to verse uh, 24. It says, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou were a hard man, and reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. I was afraid and went and hid my talent in the earth. Therefore, uh, thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered, said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I have not sowed, and gathered where I have not strawed. So he he told him he's a wicked and slothful servant. And notice he told him that because, like you were saying earlier, he didn't do anything. Right. A lot of people think we're going to be lost for the things that we do, but you can also be lost for the things that you don't you don't do. do. So that's interesting to look at in Matthew chapter 25. Yeah, I think another thing that you pointed out, you know, look at verse number 25. When the master came back, the first verse says, and I was afraid, so I hid thy talent in there. Right. You know, that's one thing. People are so afraid of judgment. You right, know, but yeah. Christ said, you know, he didn't give us the spirit of fear. Right. You know, we're power. not supposed to have that, but a power. And so if we know we've done the right things with our talents, just as the other two servants did, they doubled theirs. And so if they can double their talents, we can double ours just as Christ given us talents. Right. And so what needs, why do we need to be afraid of the judgment? Now this servant, 
this was he was afraid of the judgment. It looks like he was afraid of the master coming back. Right. So that's why he just buried it and just left. Right. You know, but if we if we're not afraid, we're gonna hear that great judgment, you know, come into my kingdom. Right. And if you look at verse thirty, it's actually talking about the very end. It says, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So just from that verse alone, that's the place that we don't want to go. That's a place exactly. that we want to try to avoid. So that's why we need to do everything that we can here on this earth to avoid that place. Yeah. And now let's look at verse number four. I think this correlates exactly with Matthew chapter 25. It says, he will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory and go with me all the way. I think this is alluding actually to this parable, it sounds like. Because mm -hmm. if you do what Christ said, he gave us an assignment. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so if we listen to this assignment, just as he gave these servants, he gave them talents. That was their right. assignment. And they doubled theirs. Right. And so we as Christians, if we follow the Great Commission, and then we're going to get that same reward they received. Right. I think one another thing to take out of this parable is that, especially for, for the youth and for people that are members of the body, that God has given all of us talents. And the way that we use those talents are going to be determined by uh, our eternal salvation, where we're going to be at, where we're going to be in heaven right. or we're going to be in hell. So like we said, God has given us all talents, and we have to use those talents for his glory. Exactly. And I think that's one great point you brought up with the youth. I think we, we're going to work towards anything we want to. Right. I remember when we played basketball, we would go outside every day. We go to practice. We stay outside after practice. We stay for hours at a time just to perfect a shot or perfect the pass right. so we can be you know, great as one unit. We're going to work towards something that we want. And so this, we really have to want to go to heaven. Right. You know, this is something that's it's huge. It's bigger than sports. It's bigger than anything that we know here. Right. And so if we want this, we're going to have to work for it. Right. You know, these other two servants, they didn't double it by just doing nothing. Right. To double it, it takes work. Right. And work isn't easy, especially, you know, in the Christian realm. Right. I was just going to say, lastly, we just have to make sure that we can that we continue to develop our talents. Right. We may not be able to do this or that right now, but we can work towards developing that certain talent. Yeah. I really like this song, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. It's good stuff. Thank you so much for being with us today. We're Open grateful controls. that you took time out of your day to, to take some time to watch the network, to watch text message. Hopefully something we've said has encouraged you in any way that we possibly can. We know that the more we talk about the Bible, the more likelihood that there is someone that's going to be encouraged by it. The Bible is such a great book to talk about, isn't it? It's a great book that has not just stories in it because it's not stories, it's history accounts. It's stuff that really did happen, stuff that you and I can know happened. The more we study, the more we'll be able to help other people in the world who may not know as much as we do at this point. And it's our job, according to the book of Mark, to go into all the world and teach the gospel. We need to do the best job that we can doing that. Don't forget the number that's been on your screen today is the number for text message. You can text it. You can call it if you need to. You don't even have to give us your name or your, your information in any capacity. Just tell us what you're thinking. We'll do our best to help you. You know, don't forget when you put your phone on the charger that you also recharge your faith. It's important that for us to charge our faith is to read the scriptures. And so let's recharge our faith by doing that and have the most updated edition as possible. I'm Michael Clark. This has been Text Message. And we'll see you next week as we examine yet more about the Bible. I will. Code scanner. But sound recognition. Code Apple TV remote camera. Flashlight wallet. Button timer. Button notes. Button hearing the music recognition selected. Screen recording.